I grew up in small town America. As a kid, I worked in a dairy. My father and grandfather both fought in World War II. There were a lot of constants in my life, things I could rely on. Church on Sundays, the Pledge of Allegiance at school, the love and support of mom and dad, and the fact that I lived in the greatest country in the world where every day dreams come true. But last Wednesday, as I sat in a congressional hearing room on a rainy day in Washington, D.C., listening to whistleblowers riveting accounts of what happened in Benghazi on the night Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Ty Woods, and Glenn Doherty were killed, my heart broke. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for joining us tonight. I've spent my career assigning blame for wrongdoing, instructing jurors on how to assess the truth, telling them to use their common sense in deciding who's credible, who has something to gain, something to lose, who has a motive to lie, telling them if someone lies once, you're free to assume they'll lie to you again. And there is something about the truth when you hear it. You simply know it. On the night he died, Ambassador Chris Stevens called whistleblower Greg Hicks to say, we're under attack. The statement, clear, unequivocal, and foreboding. And Hicks did everything he was supposed to, activating the emergency response plan, mobilizing a team to repel the attack, calling the State Department's operations center, continuously updating the operations center throughout the night, even chartering a plane to fly the Tripoli response team to Benghazi. At some point, Hicks realized he was being left out of all decision-making and that the order had been given to stand down. There would be no rescue. We now know the Obama administration lied to us. They misled us and they left Americans to die. So what do we know? Fact, the president knew at 5 p.m. his consulate and ambassador were under attack. He simply told Joint Chiefs Chairman Dempsey and Defense Secretary Panetta to take care of it. He simply went to bed. He didn't even bother to call, never checking with them again. Fact, the next morning, the president takes Air Force One to fly to a Las Vegas fundraiser for himself while Americans burn in the Middle East. He can take Air Force One for a campaign fundraiser, but he can't send fighter jets to save Americans. Fact, the fight lasted eight hours. Fact, there was no spontaneous demonstration, no YouTube video that ignited the murderous fury in Benghazi, and they all knew it. It's not one fact, but each fact taken together is a connected whole that convinces us of what the truth is. And that truth? Jay Carney, Susan Rice, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, they all lied to us. Now, I'm tired of the sugarcoating. I'm tired of putting truth to the falsehood. A lie is a lie is a lie. Let's call it what it is. The whistleblowers changed everything. The ones who were instructed by Hillary's chief of staff, Cheryl Mills, not to speak to anyone alone about Benghazi, including congressmen. But Greg Hicks says it best. The job now is a significant, it's a demotion. So I've been effectively demoted from deputy chief of mission to desk officer. Mr. President, with all due respect, you actually demote the man who was on the phone all night scrambling to get help, destroying your classified records, chartering a plane, taking on the terrorist by himself. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you demote a hero? And why would you lie to us? I'll tell you why. Because of a looming presidential election seven weeks away, because Americans can't be under attack, especially not a terrorist attack, if, as you say, Al-Qaeda is already on its heels. Mr. President, how could you not send in reinforcements? How could you not send in Americans trained for this very kind of emergency? You're the commander-in-chief. That's your job. And enter Hillary Clinton. Fact because the Benghazi consulate security was so substandard, it could only have been inhabited if you had issued the waiver. Fact, 
your department continuously denied both Ambassador Stevens and Deputy Chief of Mission Hicks' request for more security. Fact, you actually reduced security when everyone knew of the threats and the prior assaults on Benghazi. And please, don't even begin to try to sell us the idea that it was about saving money because your own staffer, Charlene Lamb, who supposedly was dismissed, swore that the resources were not an issue and my sources tell me Lamb is now up for an even higher post in the State Department. So Hillary, why would you do this? I did tell the uh, Accountability Review Board that uh, Secretary Clinton wanted the post made permanent. Oh, okay, now we know. You wanted to arrive on your chariot and announce the establishment of a permanent mission in a normalized Libya. Normalized? When you last visited Libya, you had the Defense Department pre-position assets off the Libyan coast in case you needed rescue. How could you? And then you swear under oath just back from weeks abroad, logging all those miles, recovering from the flu, the fall, the concussion, and the blood clot. You testify you didn't know a thing about your friend the ambassador's request for more security. Any of the um, requests, any of the cables having to do to secure, with security did not uh, come to my attention. Now, Hillary, I know you were busy that night calling the president of Tunisia when all the action was in Libya. But you can't deny requests for more security in Benghazi and then blame the very people who asked for it. You can't have it both ways. And you want us to believe that you and the president are going to get the facts and get justice? You can't even get to the FBI to the crime scene for three weeks. And by the way, the FBI guys, they carry guns, don't they? If it takes them three weeks because it wasn't safe in Benghazi, how the hell is it safe enough for you to keep our civilian diplomats there? And what to do? Find some guys with impeccable reputations beholden to your husband Bill, an ambassador named Pickering, an admiral named Mullen. Have them investigate and make sure they don't ask you any questions or talk to the guy in charge of the emergency response. And Pickering, he's perfect. He apparently believes America is already full of Islamophobes. And while you're at it, Hillary, why not throw the president of Libya under the bus too? The man who traveled to Benghazi at great personal risk, confirming almost immediately what you already knew, that it was a terror attack, and you basically call him a liar or clueless to the rest of the world. And how about your take on our money? You take it and buy an advertisement to apologize to the Arab world about a video that has nothing to do with Benghazi while they burn us in effigy. That'll keep the lie going too. But they say we're obsessed with Benghazi. The New York Times says that uh, our Benghazi obsession is all about hysterical allegations of crimes equal to Watergate. Really? My memory may not be all that great, but nobody died at Watergate, and no one was left on the battlefield. Our Congress, though, they're good. They'll get to the truth. I find it truly disturbing and, and very unfortunate that when Americans come under attack, the first thing some did in this country was attack Americans, attack the military, attack the president, attack the State Department, attack the former senator from the great state of New York, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. You're kidding, right? We have the best military in the world. But even with all of their technological advances, they could not get there in time. Now, this guy hasn't even heard the testimony, and he's already accusing the man who has, spent, who has the most to lose his own life and who was actually on the ground and in the battle of lying. And it gets worse. Death is a part of life. What difference at this point does it make? 
it's as if they're saying enough with the dead and on with the living on to my next election. And remember this one? The White House and the State Department have made clear that the single adjustment that was made to those talking points uh, by either of, those two, of these two institutions were changing the word consulate to diplomatic facility because consulate was inaccurate. Today we know that was a bold-faced lie. There were 12 deletions of references to terrorism at the instruction of the White House and the State Department. Hillary's henchwoman, that temple of veracity, Victoria Nuland, actually tells the CIA to remove any reference to the prior Benghazi security warnings because it could be used against Hillary. But my favorite, Leon Panetta. There just wasn't enough time. Listen to this one from seven months ago. A Monday morning uh, quarterbacking going on here. Basic principle is that you don't deploy forces into harm's way without knowing uh, what's going on, without having some real-time information. There wasn't enough time. How did you know the fight wouldn't last 24 or 48 hours or more? In which case, you could have gotten rescuers there. You could have saved Americans, but you didn't even start the process because you had no intention of saving those lives. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yes, Wednesday was a sad day for me personally, for the families of those killed, and for any American who believes, as I do, that America is the citadel of honor and freedom. This past week, the dreams that I had as a little girl in that small town were shattered.